All right, welcome back everyone. So, this is where we left off, week two in the Pale Beyond. Someone's knocking at the door. Who goes there? The door swings open to reveal Kurt Darling, all but filling its frame, grinning ear to ear. There you are, Officer Shaw. The ship's navigator is a difficult man to miss. Stature and reputation precede him. Adorned with a slew of apparatus, this seemingly one-man expedition would be known to anyone following the heyday of exploration and the merchandising that followed. Oh, it's a celebrity. <laughs> I have no time for celebrities. He'll need to pull his admittedly impressive weight the same as the next man. Hide away, hiding away from the rest of us, are you? No, I'm simply busy. Of course. The role of first mate must surely take up a great deal of your time. Apologies for not stopping by sooner, Shaw. I've been busy myself. It took a while to set up my team. And a great deal of the crew were quite eager to meet me. <coughs> Is that a brag? Oh, not at all. I just find myself in these situations, it would seem. There, are, there aren't many who haven't seen my films, particularly in this line of work. It's bragging, lah. More than one fellow on this crew said my work inspired them to explore the world. Quite the honour, is it not? Is there any point to this grandstanding? <laughs> oh, apologies. I suppose I did get d distracted, didn't I? Anyway, I was hoping you'd join me up deck. I'm busy, Kurt. You should be too. Truth be told, there's some navigation specifics I think we should revisit. We finally entered the pack. I thought you'd want to see it yourself. We'll be moving through the ice for a while. I'm not interested. Best not to leave yourself with regrets, Shaw. I'll be at the bow. I hope to see you up there soon. Kurt turns to walk away before turning back. Oh, and enjoy your morning. It's a good day, Shaw. Har! <laughs> Kurt, darling, added to manifest. All right, so he leaves. Let's have a look at our journal. Anything to add? No, it's just a recollection of what we did starting of week two. So, we are back as the rude admiral trying to run this ship. Tons of sailors that were slowly discovering. Have we figured out anyone else? Scientists, Mr. Dwight Glossley. A uh, couple of specialists. We haven't met this guy's brother, Grimly, from the last time. He's the cook. Junior is the cook. Um, and we still have some decorum. Half the fuel, half the food. And our sled dogs. Let's make it moving. All right. Oh, someone new. You note one of the science team returning to their room. She nods to you. Ah, hello. It's Mrs. Gloss. I did not expect many to be up this early. Harriet Glossley. I believe I've met your husband. Ah, yes. Dwight made mention of your encounter. He's still fast asleep. He's adjusted to the ship well. I believe a walk around the ship would help acclimatize, uh, acclimate myself to the waves. Perhaps it will take some more time. With that, Mrs. Gloss makes her way back to the cabin. Harriet Gloss. All right. What's this? Doctor's office. Uh, let's check out the doctor's office. The door to the doctor's office remains locked. You are yet to come across the ship's doctor even after all this time. All right. So that's locked. Uh, let's go to the mid-deck first before we go up. See if anyone's down here. <gasps> hammocks. Many of the crew are still fast asleep laying in hammocks. The sounds of snoring are rather obnoxious. <laughs> it's just... I like that. It's the role playing his rudeness. Uh, right. Let's head up. Let's go to the helm first. At the stern, you notice an older sailor at the helm. The old man takes in a deep breath in the cold air before letting out a satisfied exhale. Old sealer. Morning! He eyes you up. Officer Shaw, right? Lefty! Call me that on account of, well, should be obvious. He chuckles. Don't worry about the bad sight. This is all I feel. This is all feel. Just keeping us steady. He examines you. Surprised hunt picked from outside for his first mate. I'm surprised as well. He seems the insular type. He is. It must be something special for Hunter to look outside the ranks. 
colonial hun doesn't have much fondness for the military but it at least means you've got the work ethic mornings like these are about the only peace i get from the younger lot you should take these moments when you can lefty returns his attention to the helm all right let's take a minute to look around here oh, i appreciate some of the design it's very beautiful actually all right so we're going through the ice now let's meet kurt at the bow you join kurt at the bow of the ship you both feel the temperance break the flows below you gripping the railing he draws an enormous breath the footing beneath rises as the ship mounts an impending ice flow <gasps> there is a moment hesitation before a profound crack relieves the ship cascading across the ice he exhales see nothing else like it it's just <laughs> it's just ice cut don't get too excited there's going to be plenty more where it came from there's nowhere else in the world i'd rather be then you're in the right place <laughs> i assumed you'd seen everything a younger me would have agreed with you it's an interesting mix nostalgia and the never ending new look at the ice no two cracks are the same <laughs> I need a navigator, not a poet. We are about a week sail from the last known location of the old Viscount. Assuming she isn't exactly where they left her, we can't take smooth sailing for granted. Same goes for this day like. It won't remain this bright for so long once winter encroaches. Beautiful as the ice is, on this course it's going to get thicker. He looks out across the white. We won't be so confident when the leads dry up and we're stuck here till the next cycle. We need to change course. Avoid the pack. Hmm. Have you informed Captain Hunt? He won't listen to me. I think I've been dulled by I think things I've been dulled by retirement. I've probably seen more ice than he has whiskey. I'll hear no more of this. That's enough cut. We are only as good as the unhappiest man Robin. <laughs> That's first mate show. Yes officer. You leave cut to ponder the ice further. My god show is so rude man. Just going to have a quick look downstairs. I don't think there's anything new, right? Yeah. All right. Let's just go to see the captain. If he is here. <clears throat> Oh, sure. Ready for another day of work? Hmm. Did he hear Kurt's advice? He wants us to switch course. I he had a few words to share. He may have been an expert in his time. <laughs> But these days Kurt is one with more money than sense. Anyway, back to work. I was hoping you'd help me work through a few more requests from the crew. You may have noticed the line pulling up outside. Everyone on something it seems. Call them in as you please. All right. Let's start with Hammond. He looks new. A short, sour-faced man in engineer clothing approaches. Are you acting daft, Hunt? Angry engineer. Eh? Not with intention. Not bloody surprised you didn't notice. Sure, this is our chief engineer, Clive Hammond. An opinionated one. What is it, Hammond? We fit the ice and you haven't assigned any extra men down on the boiler. You have your engineering team and we've only got six arms between us. I need more manpower maintaining this. Sailors, many of the crew have their own tasks they're busy with. I know I've already assigned Smurf on the matter. The captain turns to you. How many do you think is fair? 1 3 more. Upon the crew members choose how many sailors you wish to assign. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. Open the crew manifest and I can do I just click on them or can I drag them? Interesting. Right click? No. Oh, maybe I just have to click assign crew. Oh, there we go. Some choices require you to assign 
But when I manifest in this choice, you may choose the amount to assign. Okay, he needs a couple of people. Let's send Doug Ward over there. Oh wait, can I? Oh, there you go. Um, Tashi Sheridan. And John to John's John. Eh, no, no, let's put the boy. La. Runt also in the engineering room. Alright. I think let's go with three just for now. You can take Tashi, Runt, and Runt's Da. You're giving me a ward? Ward with one bloody arm? Oh my god, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Young Runt could use someone to teach him on the job. Who better than his father? Don't get me started and hand in over the bloody stowaway. Would you rather than none? The engineer holds his tongue. Fine. But you can tell how right I was when we were buried in, under the ice. Oh god. A good spirit, that one, beneath the oil in the temple. You won't be seeing much of him, though. Prefers to burrow himself into the boiler room. Let's see Corvid first. Corvid enters the office. Hunt, you asked for a report on how the stowaway was doing. I wanted to see if the young boy has been settling in well. He has indeed. It means another mouth to feed, but the boy works hard and doesn't ask much. He has his dad to guide him as well. Exactly, they're going to be working in the engineering room. I'm sure the boy's father is ecstatic. <laughs> Worried, sick, but happy, I. Well, what do you know, Shaw? Perhaps we were right to keep the boy aboard. Oh no, I'm making me nervous, these guys. Kasha? Captain, Shaw. I thought a thought occurred to me the other day. While I was looking through the crew manifest and... Well, it might be too late for this now and we've already entered the ice. Out with it! I thought it would be good to have individual photos of, of the full crew. For your report? Not only my report, it would be good reference for the manifest. Put faces to the names. Much of this crew has served me for years. Some decades. I have little problem putting faces to the names. Your thoughts, Shaw? Eh, it's a bit late, but it's now or never. May as well get it over with. Aye, a good point. But maybe you could sound a little more enthused. No, 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 that's not my job, Hunt. Well, Belford, I see no problem there. I'll arrange for the pictures to be taken before the crew have their dinner. Thank you, Captain Shaw. No, oh, thank you, Captain Shaw. In the meantime, I'll attempt to get as many individual crew photos as I can. You're still welcome to help on that matter, Officer Shaw. Chiripath satisfied. All right. Good to have all that settled then. Perhaps we shouldn't rule out Kurt so easily. If the man thinks there could be an alternate path through the ice, he's free to search for it. Shaw, meet with him when you have the time. Changing course or not, we'll want one of his scouts set up in the crow's nest. Take care of that, then you'll be done for the day. Alright. I am curious about assigning people and seeing what that turns out to be. Okay, let's check out the sick young man here. Seasick? You spot a youthful looking man leaning over the side of the ship. His head slumped as he looks into the icy pool below. It appears he's been visited by a spot of sea, a spot of seasickness. <laughs> Are you okay? You speak out. The sickly man doesn't answer. He raises his head and turns to spot you. His eyes widening in shock as he does. <gasps> a bespectacled young man shaking with unease. He stares at you for a brief moment. A look of shame plastered upon his face. He says, sorry? Be spectacled, dad. Compose yourself, man. We should be able to handle the waves. Uh, right, of course. Uh, I'm very sorry. The man turns around and hurriedly runs in the opposite direction, avoiding your gaze. <laughs> Otter nutly, he added to the manifest. Alright, let's... Uh, huh. Oh, there's a lot of options now. Let's have a quick listen here. You overhear two of the newly arrived scouting crew talking. Ah, Quilsley, Quilsey. Have any trouble settling in? Not too bad. I can't wait for the, the, a chance to sleep though. A proper navigator never rests until their work is done. Of course, of course. I take it you have had no issue settling in? Not at all. The crew are a funny lot. Old Kurt certainly caught their attention. Ha, huh, do you think any of them would mistake Kurt and myself? You, I think you'd collapse from joy if they did. Ha! Perhaps. Alright, more people to the crew. 
Oh no. <laughs> okay, well, talk to the hooded sailor first. You spot a suspicious looking sailor emerge from the pantry. The hooded sailor spots you, keeping their heads firmly in their pockets. Not what it looks like, Officer Shaw. Black, call me gnomes. I'm not thieving anything. You have a good explanation then? I have a perfectly good explanation. No worries, I was just setting up a practical joke. You best not be making a mockery of the crew. We appreciate it fine, don't you worry. It's not at your expense if that's your concern. Have to get some enjoyment around here, don't you think? With their mysterious trap set, Gnome scurries off into the upper decks to return to work. Alright, what's this by the way? Pantry. The moment you enter the pantry, a bag of flowers. Oh! I, I, I had a feeling the moment I was about to do it that I shouldn't have. The moment you enter the pantry, a bag of flower, flower drops on your head, scattering all over the officer's uniform. The hell was that? Gnomes! You wipe the flo flower off of you uh, before continuing. God's sake, gnomes. What is that? Teen food. You lift a crate of teens from the shelf. One crate of teen food. What is that for? Hmm, curious. Approach the cook. Ah, one step ahead of me. If you add those tins to the hoosh, we should be good for dinner. What will it be this week? Shaw? The hoosh pot. Hmm, let's just, let's, let's come back to that. I mean, maybe there's another bit. Oh, what's this? Accordionist. Oh, he spots you and sees us in his playing. We eat something. You're grimly, aren't you? The man grunts. I grimly stoke. I'm the ship's carpenter. If you are the carpenter, shouldn't you be working? <laughs> God's sake. On break. Taking time to practice. Remind me, is it your job to play ditties or stop this boat from sinking? Grimly glares at you. I do my job well enough. Clearly not if you have time to loaf around. Don't loaf, I earned this break. Won't keep you from your work. Don't keep me from my break. Okay. Pumps? Interesting. Okay, we're learning about more and more about the ship. Alright, let's move up. Anything else here? Uh... Alright, let's... Okay, let's let's add that uh, stuff to the pot now. Feed the hoosh pot. Oh, interesting. Resource items may be spent here for instant effects, increasing food or changing state. Okay, interesting. So I just have to click that. So I just added a bunch of food. The furnace goes up too. Interesting. Feed the hoosh. Okay, so I can bring other things here and feed the hoosh. Uh, okay, before we call the crew for dinner, let's go talk to... Okay, let's form the scouting. While examining the rigging of the ship, your eyes notice a figure darting by, climbing on the ropes with ease. The figure lands on their feet before dusting themselves off. The outfit denotes one of Kurt's scouting crew. Ah, no problems. She looks to you. And you are? I'm the first mate. You should address me as such. Uh, sure. Flick, I'm one of Kurt's crew. Don't worry about my safety, I know what I'm doing, trust me. Kurt doesn't just hire anyone. Well, he didn't hire me for no reason. Got the medals in gymnastics if you're worried about my credentials. Flick jumps up and returns to scaling the rigging of the ship. Alright. Kurt! Send me up there. I'll get you a reading. The scientist eyes the man's cane and turned to you. I believe the navigator means you to send one of his scouts. The navigator clears his throat and taps his cane. Of course, uh, if you find one of mine, they'll get us a reading rightly. Okay, well, let's see. Oh, even higher up. Scout from the crow's nest. Well, I mean, they're all scouts. Why don't we send... We'll send her. She's already around there. So, Flick Clipper. You will scout for us. They ascend to the nest and take a reading with... Oh, take a reading. All clear from up top. Oh, what is this? 
Ork Island. The last spot you made where you picked up Kurt and the scouting team from. Okay, so we're actually gonna get a view of everything. Viscount Island. The last known location, the Viscount, your destination. Okay, and then... Okay. Okay, so we can always use this to scout our path ahead and figure out where we want to go. Okay, so more information for us. All right, let's... Oops. Let's get back to the ship, go down, and let's get the crew their food. I'm going to assume there's nothing in my office. Let's get the crew their food and keep it going. I'm still covered in flour though. The crew have their meal. Ha! Shall we toast to the ice? Aye. The days get longer, but dinner, dinner is fixed. It will see us through the long days and the darkest nights. The crew return to their post. Their hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. You can't help but notice that it's still bright light outside. Let's listen. You notice two sailors passing by from the dinner table. An inebriated sailor on wobbling legs leaning on the shoulder of another. Ah, good times, good times. Need to learn to handle your drink, Tucker. Ah, but I'm fine. My mates carry, can carry me, eh, cavity? They can also drop you. Have two Johns carry you next time. Are you asleep? Shit! <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a colorful crew. Alright. Anyone else here? Oh, what's this? Door. You knock on the door. No response. Let's head up. Let's have a listen. You overhear two engineers chatting above deck. Or rather, you overhear one engineer speaking with another. Grips. Don't know how the chief could stay down there all evening. You ever see Mr. Hammond eat? I haven't. Maybe he doesn't even eat. Man's not human if he can work all day and night on that boiler. Probably doesn't sleep either. He probably sleeps. Aye, Dick. It's figurative. Right. Okay. Uh, let's... Anything up there? This takes me back to the map, I think. Sorry, just a quick look. Nothing new. All right. And captain has turned out, turned off for the evening. Let's enter the forecastle. Oh, dogs. Approach the dogs. Ingrid Cordell. The dogs regard her with rapt attention as she paces between them, bowl in hand. The largest joins her side as you approach. Try some. What's in it? Caviar and rose petals. I've already eaten. Fair. She takes a sip herself without hesitation. Penguin, some blubber, fats and proteins. Fastest way to hydrate them. Is there something you needed? Why are you here? Oh, right to it then. She pats the dog by her side. I'm here for them. They belong here more than we do. Unlike us, they need the ice. It cools them through their paws as they run. They'd overheat otherwise. You've been on the ice for a long time. A long time, yes. Who's that beside you? This is Stanberry. Bark. Strong animal. Very. They handle stress differently, adapt quickly. There's plenty to be learned from them. You love these animals. They need me. And you'll need them. I am kind enough to pet a dog, I think. It's not that cruel an admiral, it's just rude to people. It barks at you and moves behind its master. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> it knows that I have uh, great people skills. Alright, I'm going to assume I'm going to retire for the night. Unless there's anything else. Oh, can I knock the door now? Still no response. You can hear the sounds of rustling inside. Again. After knocking the door several times, he finally swings open to reveal on a Templeton science team. Annoyed scientist. Yes? Do you require my presence? I am acquainting... Why didn't you answer the first time? <laughs> I expected you to be one of those bothersome sailors. I did not expect my presence to be required at this time. You should know I am a meteorologist of this expedition. Andre Isaac. Uh, if I am not required for anything, I would ask you not to be, not to be disturbed any further. Alright. I mean, still a crew member. Uh, and I think we are going to retire for the evening, most likely. Or not. 
Hmm, what am I missing? Oh, I probably just have to progress the week. Yes. And there we go. Okay. Half the rations. Okay, probably are going to lose some. So yeah, some morale is being lost because of the loss of fuels. Like you can't, if I go there, I can't confirm. Yeah. Um, so we don't have enough fuel to burn out. So we end up with um, less decorum, but it's okay. Maybe you can recover that. And that is it. End of the second week. Another week passes. The temperance has finally entered the thick ice leads. The days grow ever brighter. And with that, we will be ending the second week. And it's time to see what the new week holds for us. So far, a little bit of decorum loss, meeting a lot more of the crew. It's almost filled up our manifest to a degree. And it's interesting to see if the assigning these people to some of these tasks, oh, seasick is green, uh, assigning them to some of the tasks, whether it, de it matters who I assign where. So let's find out more. Oh, sorry. Let's find out more the next time. Thank you again for joining. Like and subscribe. I hope you've been enjoying this journey as much as I have. Have a good day.